Uh, this is Mr. Hansen. Today I'm going to talk about how children develop empathy and theater of mind. Empathy can be defined as the ability to understand other people and their experiences and emotions. Um, theater of mind is an aspect of empathy. You could say that it's the cognitive aspect of it, or a cognitive aspect of it. And uh, it's the ability to understand another person's intentions. Young children are usually quite poor at theater of mind, because it's not fully developed yet. And it's closely related to the concept of egocentrism, uh, which comes from Piaget's theory. Uh, which, uh, of course, is the ability or inability to take someone else's perspective, which uh, children usually uh, are unable to, as has been demonstrated by, or as was demonstrated by PHA and Inhelder in their, their famous uh, Three Mountain Task. And uh, why are children uh, not so? very young children are not so strong at the theory of mind, it's because of brain development. Because there's a biological aspect to uh, the development of theory of mind. You can say that some uh, neurochemicals that are linked to, to empathy and, and theory of mind are oxytocin, but also a neurotransmitter called glutamate. And as you probably know, uh, many mental disorders are linked to a lack of empathy, possibly due to some kind of uh, brain damage. The most known uh, mental disorder that is linked to uh, undeveloped empathy is, of course, psychopathy. And uh, studies, for example, a study by Sachs and Candisher, a brain scan study, show that the areas that are involved in processing of of uh, social uh, understanding is, is the parietal and temporal lobes around here. So in that study, uh, a group of women were asked to m make inferences, use, use their ability for theory of mind by reading stories or, or, or hearing looking at people. And they found that those uh, areas uh, were involved in that and uh, doing that processing. And uh, children's uh, theory of mind and empathy develops through stages and then it progress uh, through childhood. And there are many, there are many components of, of this, uh, uh, this uh, phenomenon of, of theory of mind. And one of those aspects is, uh, is called uh, knowledge access. And knowledge access is the ability to understand that people might have different information and therefore see things differently. They might have access to different information. And this, uh, the ability for knowledge actually is, uh, is tested through uh, something called the sally Ann test and that you, you do with children. And uh, uh, basically uh, children are told a story uh, uh, and with the use of dolls, the doll Sally and Anne. And Sally has a marble and a basket, and uh, Anne has a box which is empty. And uh, Sally puts the marble in the basket, and then the child knows that Sally leaves. And Anne, who is a little bit naughty, she takes the marble from the basket and puts it in the box and hides it in the box. And then Sally returns. The child is being asked, where are, where is Sally going to look for, for uh, the uh, marble? And if you have a theory of mind, because Sally wasn't there, she didn't see when Anne moved it to the box, she will look in a basket. But if your knowledge, the ability for knowledge access has not fully developed, children will say what they know, which is that they think Sally is going to look in, in, the, in the box. And... Uh, 
uh, children can usually pass this test around four and a half. Uh, and, and this is this a very known study uh, by Baron Cohen, for example, that uh, had these findings. And they, they compare this with children who, who had autism. And they found that uh, those children with autism actually couldn't, m many of those children could not could not pass the Salian test, which suggests that there is, fear of mind is linked to, fear of mind deficit is linked to, to autism. Uh, and, but there, there are also uh, social cultural aspects to the development of fear of mind. And uh, there's a very famous, uh, well, famous and famous, but it's a study by Shaiyan in uh, on Iranian and Australian children, and then they did a, a, a multitude of different tests on, on theory of mind with those children in, in, in Australia and in, in, in Iran, and they found that the the progress of theory of mind differed between Iranian children and Australian children. So uh, actually, Iranian children passed the Salian test earlier than Australian children. But uh, Australian children were able to earlier to, to uh, pass other tests, uh, such as a test on diverse beliefs. The uh, meaning of diverse beliefs is the understanding that people actually might have different beliefs about the world, and they, they, might, see, they might see things uh, differently. And one uh, suggestion of, of these findings could be that this uh, this difference in in theory of mind development is also linked to to culture, and uh, Iran and Australia are, are different in, in the dimension of individualism and collectivism. In Iran, of course, it's a bit more collectivistic. In, in Australia, it's a bit more individualistic. So, if you're from a culture that encourage encourages diverse beliefs, children might earlier uh, catch up on that, understand that people have their various beliefs. On the other hand, if you're from a culture where, where you collectivistically encourage people to, to share their knowledge and, and, uh, no, and like help each other, uh, you might also at the same time be more likely to, to understand knowledge access earlier. Okay, so this was a short summary of fear of mind and empathy. I hope it has enlightened you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.